Hey Cancer, what's going on? Welcome to your September of 2019 astrology and tarot reading. My name is Jagabind and this is your channel for Grace. Thank you guys so much for being here, for subscribing, hitting the notification bell and giving the video a thumbs up. What I'm going to do in this video for you guys is <clears throat> go through the astrology of seven major events that are happening in September, astrological events. I actually did an entire video about this and um, it's called the September 2019 Astrological Forecast. So make sure you check that video out so you get a lot of the, 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 the details of these events because in this video I'll talk in a general sense about them and how they're affecting you personally, but I'm not going to go into detail about what's it, what exactly is going on with the aspects. <clears throat> So it'll be a little bit of detail, but not as much detail as I go into um, in that other video. So just want to make sure you guys know. After we do uh, the astrology talk, I will uh, pull some cards for you guys for the month of September. And the tarot reading will be for Cancer, Rising, um, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. So just to make sure you guys know that. So... <clears throat> The very first event that is happening in the month of September starts on the 1st and it is a Sun conjunct Mars in the sign of Virgo. Mars is our drive and the Sun is like who we are. <clears throat> this is um, bringing this, uh, this uh, energy of um, very intense and powerful drive to really express ourselves and get things done. This uh, conjunction is happening in your third house of communication. So you're going to feel an intense drive to want to communicate. You're going to want to communicate the right way. You're going to want to get organized about communicating. You're going to want to feel um, very intensely that your communication um, skills are getting better, better and better. It's actually a really cool place to have this conjunction. On the third, um, the conversation adds the essence of Mercury and Venus. So it'll be Sun, Mars, Mercury, conjunct and then Venus kind of gets pulled into the equation <clears throat> but basically um, this is also happening in your third house of communication so now you're not able to you're not only able to uh, really uh, communicate well or you feel this drive to really communicate very strongly in your life but now you're able to kind of bring in the thought aspect of it so so you get organized in how you're going to communicate. You're able to think very clearly about how you're going to communicate, which is actually really cool. On the 13th, we have a full moon in Pisces, and this is happening in your ninth house of spirituality. This is cool because these two aspects that I just mentioned are happening in your third house, and the opposite house <clears throat> on the chart is the ninth house. So the house of communication and spirituality are opposite houses. <clears throat> and Pisces is a very emotional sign. It's a very um, loving sign. It's a very sympathetic sign. It's very caring. This is going to be a very powerful full moon. And I will be doing a separate video, <clears throat> excuse me, to talk about that chart specifically. But when it comes to um, just talking about where it's happening in, in your life, you will be connecting in a very deep emotional way, which you already are a very emotional being. Cancer is, you know, the, 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 the emotions, the water, the, like how you flow in that way. And you flow through life through your emotions. You're ruled by the moon. <laughs> so I know people that are cancers that whenever the new moons or the full moons come, especially the full moons, they feel like, ah, oh, they feel really good. You can really identify with this energy of the moon that a lot of other people feel like a very intensity around it, but you actually like the intensity. It helps you to go deeper. So you're going to be going deeper into this like Pisces energy of being loving. And Pisces is also <clears throat> uh, intuition and psychic abilities and um, the subconscious mind. And also uh, Neptune is in Pisces as well. So that's adding power to this full moon in fact it will be conjuncting neptune in pisces on that day so it, like it's hard to talk about this in a general sense because there's so much going on on that day for example the moon will be making aspects to the sun mercury mars and venus conjunction it'll be making aspects to jupiter uranus neptune pluto and the north node and that's a lot of energy for a full moon to be engaged in, like a lot, a big, huge conversation. 
with the other planets. So just know that this is going to be a powerful day and it's going to activate you. It's going to allow you to heal yourself in a spiritual way through your emotions, which in essence is who you are. So it's, it'll be a very beautiful expression of, of you on this full moon day. On the 14th, uh, we have Mercury and Venus moving into Libra and they're going to be conjuncting at zero degrees. However, they're also going to be opposing Chiron. This is happening in your, um, let's see, it's happening in your fourth and 10th houses. So Mercury <clears throat> and Venus will be in your fourth house, which is your house of the home, your house of family and your house of parents. And that is a really cool energy. It a lot, it, like Libra energy is cooperation. It's wanting to um, avoid conflict. It's a very like relationship oriented sign. And um, however, when it opposes Chiron in Aries in your 10th house of career, you're going to like we're all in essence going to feel um, our wounds coming up because Chiron is the wounded healer. And this is our wounds that have to do with with feeling like we're not being good enough in our lives. You might you might have fears of not being good enough at home. You might have fears of like not being at your best at home or your relationship with your parents. You might feel like it's not it's not the best, you know, and your home is your it's like the fourth house is ruled by cancer the home and the moon and it's it has a lot to do with how you feel at home so this energy is bringing up a lot of fears ego fears for for a lot of us Facing, it's making us face our ego fears. That's what Chiron does. It makes us face our ego fears. And it's also about being wounded in our ability to, in a, in our ability to communicate, which is Mercury. So you're going to be feeling this. It's like a strange thing. Chiron in your 10th house of career is like pulling you this way. Um, Mercury and Venus are like in Libra are pulling you this way in your fourth house of the home. So you've got career and home and this opposition and, and, and like bringing stuff up that needs to be healed in your home life and in your house of career. So it's going to be kind of intense for you because this is so close to home. This is who you are. This is like your ruling house. But um, know that it's all for growth. We're, we're really asking, the universe is really asking all of us to step up and really grow. Like really start to grow. <clears throat> On um, the 17th, the moon will be conjuncting Uranus or Uranus. I use both ways to say it. I don't know why it just switches, <laughs> which it will be in Taurus. And that will be quincunxing Mercury, which will be in Libra in your fourth house. That is going to be your fourth house to your 11th house of friends. So Mercury will be in the fourth house in Libra. And then the moon and Taurus will be in your 11th house of friends. Uranus always brings into any kind of conversation with any planets this energy of being different, revolutionary, changing it up. And the moon is about emotions and Mercury is about thoughts. Mercury is asking you to think. Uranus is asking Mercury to think differently, in essence, asking you to think differently. And Uranus is asking you to feel differently as well, to try to come up with innovative solutions to these issues that are going on for you in your fourth house. So, you know, the transit that goes on on the 14th reg regarding Chiron is actually getting some kind of resolution with Uranus quincunxing Mercury. So you'll, you'll feel that for sure. And I kind of like how that flows one into the other for you. On the 18th, Saturn will be going um, direct in your house of relationships. And I forgot to mention that this is for Cancer Sun and Cancer Rising. Make sure you know what your rising sign is and watch that video. But um, <clears throat> your seventh house is the house of relationships. And when Saturn goes direct, it means it's go time. Our ambition awakens. 
our um, self-discipline awakens, our determination awakens, we want to go. And for you, this is going to be in the realm of relationships. So you're going to want to figure things out. This is also business relationships. So it's, it's almost like all systems go. That's why I called the September uh, um, astrological forecast video, it's go time. Because it's all systems go with Saturn going direct. Like we're going to start moving forward. It's going to start moving forward way faster rate. Um, Pluto will go direct in, in later, but th both of those planets are coming into a really big conjunction. That's going to be very powerful in January, but for now, Saturn going direct in your seventh house is going to activate you wanting to move forward with relationships, move forward with business relationships, um, and that's that can be very, very powerful. On the 22nd, Saturn will oppose the moon in Cancer, which will be in your first house of self-identity like you are the moon in cancer <laughs> like you are ruled by the moon in cancer so you're gonna be over there like feeling all good like yeah moon in cancer i feel at home i feel um very beautiful i feel very serene i feel very calm and then saturn's gonna be like hey i'm gonna point the finger at you and i'm gonna and i'm gonna show you all the things that you haven't done that that you have done wrong it's like the, the moon in Cancer is like this very childlike energy, very emotional, very sensitive. And then Saturn is like the parent that's scolding the child, right, for being too sensitive. So on this day, you're going to feel a little bit of like insecurities come up. Because when we're getting scolded, when we're getting yelled at, when we're getting shown, you know, the things that we're doing wrong, that doesn't feel good. So this is going to, you're going to feel like giving up a little bit with everything you've been working on. But the way to get through this is to stay positive and to, to motivate yourself. Just remember that this is just a transit and the moon travels really fast. So even though you'll feel that way for a little bit, it'll change quickly and you'll feel a lot more amazing and easy aspects once that passes through because it's really bringing stuff up for you to heal. And, and, it's, and it's testing you to be positive and motivate, and, and motivate yourself. And on the next day, on the 23rd, the sun moves into Libra and we're literally in the fall. The summer has ended. This is now us moving into a whole new season, um, an inward journey, finding more balance in our lives, in our relationships when it comes, with, when it comes to um, the Libra energy. It's all about relationships. So you'll feel um, a pull to begin to release and let go of things in your life that no longer serve you. And we end the month on the 28th with a new moon in Libra, which is about new beginnings and um, setting intentions. The fall equinox and the, and the sun moving into Libra, it's happening in your fourth house of home, family and friends. So those are the, the shifts you're going to feel them in your home life. And for the new moon, the same thing is happening in your fourth house. There's a lot happening in your fourth house of the home, the family, and the parents this month. Just know that things are going to get triggered. Things are going to come up that you need to deal with. Um, and it's all for the, for, the, for the good of you, for the growth of you, for the, the spiritual awareness of you. So that's in a nutshell um, what September is, is going to feel like for you or you know hopefully will feel like for you um and you can navigate through these um energies by just remembering how amazing of a being you are and how beautiful it is to be emotional um because that's who you are that's your essence you really identify with that and just be okay with who you are i think we all need to definitely be okay with who we are now more than ever so i'm going to say a little prayer and pull some cards for you guys for cancer sun moon venus and rising <clears throat> thank you spirit guides angels teachers for being here with us today please help clear the energy of the cards that i'm going to be using as well as my energy so that i can be that clear and open channel for the wisdom the intuition and the messages to flow through to you my cancer family cancer family i'll pull five cards um these cards oh i don't want anything to fall these cards are um Intuition card, challenge card, overall theme, and um, <laughs> wisdom from the ancestors. I said I don't want anything to fly, and then everything flew everywhere. Okay. <laughs>
there we go. <laughs> they're really, I can feel they're really like, hey, 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 I got a lot to say. I got a lot to say. Let's uh, pay attention here. Pay attention here. <laughs> All right. What is the intuition card? Okay. We get the death card and the six of cups. Actually, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> what is the overall theme for cancer for the month of September? Queen of Cups and Five of Swords. Hmm. And those are the, those two cards that came out. And let us pull an animal card. Which animal is going to guide Cancer for this month? an animal for cancer for September 2019 the peacock okay so um, let me show you the cards you got the death card as your intuition card six of cups as your challenge queen of cups as the overall theme five of swords as the wisdom from the ancestors this is a beautiful message and the peacock as uh, your animal spirit. Okay. There's a lot of things that are falling away. September for you will be a month of a lot of release. A lot of things that need to be let go of, forgiven, moved on from, and seriously just allowed to, to go. And in this energy of death, this sort of shamanic death ritual, you're being asked to deal with things. Things are going to be coming up to the surface and it's going to have to do a lot with emotions because you have two cup cards right here. And the cups are the water and the emotions. But emotionally, there's going to be a very, there's going to be an emotional clearing, an emotional death and rebirth this month for you. It's going to be very beautiful. It doesn't surprise me because you do have a lot of this um, aspects happening in your fourth house of the home. The six of cups is your challenge. The six of cups is it's childhood memories. It's childhood emotions. It's also looking back and seeing the beautiful things that, that were when you were little, the beautiful things that, that were a part of your life when you were that young. And it's kind of like reminiscent, reminiscing, but what I feel in this is these are the things that are going to come up. Childhood memories, childhood trauma, anything that has to do with what happened when you were little. Thus, those are the emotions that are going to come up and they're going to want to be released. Because what you're being asked to do this month, Cancer, is to master your emotions. The Queen of Cups. She is the master of her emotions. She does not let herself get taken off course. She understands how she feels. She knows how she feels. She's okay with how she feels. That's what it is to master your emotions. You're okay with how you feel and you understand that feeling is a, a part of life and you are a cancer. So this is, this is more for you, a powerful message than for a lot of other signs because you are the moon in cancer. You are this cancer watery energy. And it is in, in this energy that you will find your gift. I see dolphins in this card, or there are dolphins in this card, which is another powerful um, message. Dolphins are healers. People swim with dolphins because they want to heal themselves. So you're going to be healing a lot this month. This is going to be a very beautiful cleansing, emotional cleansing and healing. And you'll get to the energy of the five of swords. And usually the five of swords, it's like you have to, you know, you're like fighting for what your rights, you know, you're, you're trying to stand up for yourself. You're being kind of aggressive. This is very Mars and Mars energy. And you see, um, well, there's v there's Venus, but anyways, this is Mar this is a, like, to me, it feels very Mars energy to be like, here's my sword. You know, like you can't fight me. 
But what this is saying is you're becoming stronger. This, um, this card is saying all of these things that are happening, going through the death ritual, dealing with whatever childhood trauma comes up, learning to master your emotions. It all will lead to your strength. It's going to lead to your strength and you're going to finally see how beautiful the world really is because the peacock is about beauty, seeing the beauty of the world and assimilating everything. Peacocks, like they, they, they can process anything. You're going to be stepping into this energy. Like you're, it's almost like you become untouchable. People cannot affect you emotionally. That's the mastery of the emotions that comes with the queen of cups. So this is so beautiful. This much is just so beautiful. I'm, I'm really excited for you guys. I'm really excited for you, Cancer. And I hope that this reading resonated with you. I will see you again next time. If you have any questions or any uh, comments, just, leave, just post them below. And I do hope you have an amazing September. It's going to be so beautiful for you. I just love it. So see you in October for your October reading. Satnam.